Howdy. I mentioned in one of my videos that somebody had commented back they didn't like uh, working with propane or anything pressurized, and I've got something to, uh, to show. This is it. It is a Butterfly Kerosene uh, A822. It's 17,000 BTUs and runs on kerosene. Um, these are the wicks. It comes with two extra wicks, plus the wick that we installed already. And I'll show you everything that comes with it. Okay, so a little tool to uh, get the wicks through. Um, so you can fish them. I'll show you how that works. Product manual, receipt, I think. There's an instruction sheet as well. We put this all to the side. A filler cup. Great. Move this off to the side and take it out of the box. So. Front this way. These are made in Indonesia. Um, they're very common in uh, third world countries. Uh, let me take the burner off and show you how it all goes. You get this through the top, you tilt it, and come in. This is the, the catal catalyst. It keeps it from killing you with a CO. Just like a kerosene heater in your house would do. Um, you can move it back and forth and get even off your wicks. I'll put this off to the side. And this is the kerosene storage where you fill. It's a very basic system. Cork float for your, for your fuel gauge. The wicks are installed through uh, the little tubes here. And you can adjust the wicks by turning down, we'll turn it off and up. Um, you can adjust them, pull them up higher if you need to. They should all be about even. Uh, there's a fuel fill area. So you don't have to take this off to fill. You take the cap off and you can fill. Um, and uh, that's really it. It's a simple system. There's a chamber on the bottom. And I went with the aluminum one because I figured it wouldn't rust. Um, they have an aluminum and a steel one. And we might end up getting both because I like to have two burners out here. And I went with two single burn or single burners because I can move them around independently. So if I wanted to bring one back to my cabin uh, or to the uh, to my father-in-law's place, we could take one burner over there and leave one here. It gives us some options as opposed to having two burners here, which only gives you two burners. They also make a dedicated stove uh, oven unit that goes on the top and allows you to bake small items. Obviously, this is about 12 inches, so probably 12 inch by 12 inch pans. Um, and it was like under $100 for that if you wanted it. Um, yeah, the wicks just fit in the kerosene. Wick it up. There's no kerosene in here now. We haven't filled it, but we're going to fill it now. And then we'll give it a couple hours to uh, wick, and then we'll light it up and boil some water. Let me get the wicks in. Put this back down. You should never really do this indoors, but everyone actually does it indoors. So. I'm just going to do it right here. Um, you should really do it outside for safety reasons, but yeah, I'm doing it here. It's raining outside. Um, kerosene, pick it up uh, a lot of gas stations. We get it from uh, the Indians near us. You get these uh, bulb style fillers from Home Depot. They're like under $10. And all you do is squeeze it, and it creates a siphoning effect. And once it starts, I can watch on the fuel gauge it go up. I'm not sure how accurate that is. I'm just going to keep on looking in the tube. Okay, I'm going to shut it down now. I don't want to fill it all the way up. Open up the air valve in the end, it breaks the siphoning action, and now the wicks are ready to uh, start wicking. Okay, it's been a couple hours. We went over to uh, Amish Tarp Sharp, ordered tarp, tarp shop, and ordered the tarp from my front porch, and uh, the wicks have wicked. So, uh, in order to light these, we lift up the front, we want to extend the wick all the way up. And, well, of course I don't like the match. And, 
I don't know if I have to hit each one. Let's go carry around. We're getting a fair bit of black smoke, so. Okay, so uh, I, it's not boiling yet. It's only been a minute or so. But um, the catalyst area is now working actually really nice. So it took about a minute for it to start up. Um, where you're getting yellow flames and all that jazz. Now it's a nice blue flame and you can actually see right down the center of it. And there's little blue fireballs along all the perforations in the catalyst. Uh, a nice blue flame up to the top. So that's, uh, that's all good. I can actually hear the water starting to, to, to boil around the edges already. So we're not getting any blow by, you know, like we were at the beginning. And some of that could have been machine oil from, from yeah, we should have done the first burn outside, but it's raining out. I didn't really feel like doing that. Um, yeah, like I said, if it continues to do it, every time we start it, I'll let you know that that's the way they work. Maybe they always have a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, blow by and black at the start. I'm not sure if it'll show up on the camera, but I can hear it, you know, sizzling. The burner is supposed to be 14,000 BTUs, and I have it at the highest setting right now. And it has been uh, about five minutes for four cups of water. You can start to see the steam coming up. And I'm not going to stop the clock until I get a rolling boil. So I'm going to keep the camera going because it's almost, it's almost there. Right? After, after I first started up there for a minute there, I was kind of worried for a second. But... Uh, that's nice blue flame, you know, a couple flicks of yellow here and there, but mostly it's not, you know, it's blue all the time, all the way around. Blue flame is good. And we have a rolling boil on four cups of water that took six minutes. Yeah, we have a good rolling boil now. Okay, so I removed the, uh, the pan and uh, we were studying how it worked. And there's a seam on the uh, on the interior catalyst surface, and that's the one yellow flame you see right here, right along that seam. Um, you can minimize it by moving it around a little bit. So you get to one spot. It's probably a good idea to try to get it to a one spot instead of two. This burner is still up nice and high, but uh, you can. I'm not sure if it shows up on the camera or not. Yeah. Hold something behind it. There's a piece of cardboard there. I'm going to hold it behind, quite a ways behind. I'm not sure if it's going to show up or not on camera or not. We got a, a good flame up to about here. So now I'm going to turn it off. And to turn it off, you lower the wicks in the tubes. So. You can see how it's lowering the flame, lowering the heat, and turning it right down now. And they are starting to extinguish. And we're at the bottom. Most of them are out. Looks like some part works for a little bit long. I still got a flame, so I'm gonna blow the ones I can get to. Actually, I took care of all of them, so now it's out. When you're not using it, keep the wicks all the way down. Whatever you're ready to use. It's very cool. And while we're out, we always have to worry about mice out here. These wicks look like awesome mouse bedding. <laughs> so. Uh, we found an old pickle jar, tossed the instructions, the receipt, the two sets of extra wicks, and the wick installation tool in. Um, we'll store this under right here so we can find it. And uh, they'll be here. I'm not sure how long the wicks actually last. I guess I'll find out. Um, you know, restarting it, I probably want to wait till it cooled down all the way. Although this isn't hot. Um, I'm positive that shield in there is hot. I'm not going to find out one way or the other. Um, fit wise, you know, we have that small pot on there. This is a cast iron, what is it, 10 or 12 inch. And it fits perfectly in there. It's awesome. So that's, 
Yeah, I actually have a video where I showed the, the before and the after this. I, I got this as a gift um, over the winter time. It's an old cast iron pan. I figured we'd leave it out here. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty stoked. This works. Um, we'll keep a. I'll update you on the blog, probably not, not videos for the most part, on how it works out. Um, if it works out well, we'll get, probably get a second one and leave them both here height-wise. I don't know if that'll fit on my shelf or not. It does? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it does fit down here, which is great. I didn't plan that one way or the other. It just happened to work out. Um, very happy. Very cool. And it's different. We're going to make this cabin actually run on kerosene for the most part. We're gonna get. We have kerosene lanterns. We have the propane one up here now that we've been using, and you can hear it buzzing sometimes in the videos because I don't have any light sources. Um, I'm gonna get a kerosene pressurized lantern out here sooner or later. It's on my to-do list. eBay has them for like 40 bucks, and that's about all I'm going to spend. So um, that'll come out here. So this whole cabin's liquid fuel sources will all be uh, kerosene, just because I feel like doing it that way. So, yeah, that's it. This is a butterfly, what model was it? The A822 um, stove. Made in Indonesia. Works great. So, until next time, thanks for watching.